For this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the p-value for the given standardized test statistic and tail of the test, and then we will decide if we should reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis based on the given level of significance. For this one, I am going to show you how to find the p-value using the normal table. Um, when you are given the information, it's always important to draw a picture so you can see visually what you are finding. Okay, so for z equals negative 2.05, that would be down here. And when it says left tail, that means that we're trying to find the area to the left of this. Okay, and the p-value, all that is, is the probability of getting a z-score that is less than the standardized test statistic that we have. So we're looking for the probability that z is less than negative 2.05. So the p-value just stands for the probability value. It's how likely it is to get results like these if the null hypothesis were actually true. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our table and we're going to look for negative 2.05. So I would go down this column to find the negative 2.0 and then I would go across until I level up with the 5 and we can see that it's 0 0.0202 and that is my probability. Okay, now what we can do to make our decision is we can compare our p-value to our alpha level. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at our p-value, 0 0.0202, and compare it to our given alpha level, that is 0 0.05. And we can see that 0 0.0202 is less than 0 0.05, and any time the p-value is less than your cutoff, that means that it's more extreme than what you would like to see or typical values to be. Um, so anytime it is less than, then we reject the null hypothesis. If it was greater than, then we would fail to reject. So if it's less than or if it's equal to, we are going to reject. If it is not less than or equal to, so it's greater than, then we fail to reject. All right, so looking at the next one, we have z equals 1.87. So for this one, what we're going to do is draw out our model. Okay, 1.87 is positive. That means that it is to the right of the mean of zero. Okay, and then we're going to look for this area here. The area in this tail is going to be our p-value. Okay, and so you have two options here. I prefer the first one and that's the method that I'm going to show. The method that I like to use is look at the opposite z-score. Okay, because the table typically gives the values or the area to the left of, so I would look for negative 1.87. The other option is to look at, look for 1.87 and then do 1 minus the area to the left. Okay, to me this is more work. I will show you that they end up being the same. But for this, whenever it's right tail, the way that we would write this is we would say that the p-value is the probability that z is greater than 1.87 or to the right of. So greater just means to the right of. Okay, um, so if I get my table, like I said, I can either go to negative 1.87. This is my preferred way. Okay, if you go to negative 1.8 and then go across to 7, you get 0 0.0307, and that's just your answer, 0 0.0307. Had you decided to do this one, the 1 minus the area to the left, what you would have to do is you would have to go to your positive... 1.8 and then find the 7 so I would scroll across until I'm equal with the 7 and I get 0.9693 
And then if I subtract these, I get 0 0.0307. So you get the same answer every single time. To me, this is just a much easier method, is just to go to the opposite z-score because the area to the right of positive 1.87 is equal to the area to the left of negative 1.87. So whenever I'm finding area to the right, I just go and look for the opposite z-score because it gets me to the answer the quickest. All right, so now what we're going to do is compare our p-value to our alpha, and we see that 0 0.0307 is less than 0 0.10. So again, for this one, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. All right, for the last one that I'm going to do with you, and then I'm going to have you try a couple on your own, what I'm going to do is draw out my picture. 1.92 is to the right, so I would shade to the right, but because it says that it's a two-tailed test, that means that I also have to shade to the left, okay? And it's going to be the left of negative 1.92 because the area to the right is the same as the area to the left. So again, you can do the same thing that we did up here. Just remember that only half of our p-value is in one tail and then in the other one it's half of our p-value okay so to get our p-value when it's a two tail test you can either do two times the probability that z is greater than 1.92 or you could write it as and typically we'll write whatever we're given so since we're given the positive one this would be the typical way of writing it or you could have also done, because it's going to be equivalent, two times the probability that z is less than negative 1.92, or you could just add them together. I could do the probability that z is greater than 1.92 plus the probability that z is less than negative 1.92. So most of the time, like I said, you're gonna just write it based off of whichever one you are given. Um, but all of these are equivalent expressions, so you'll get the exact same answer, okay? So what I'm going to do is, like I said, whenever it's to the right of, I go to the opposite, and I look for that z-score, and we would just take two times that value, okay? So we're going to look for negative 1.92, so let me go back up to my negative side. Negative 1.9, and then this one does count down, so the 2 would be the third to last column, so I would go negative 1.9 and we see that it's 0 0.0274. So we're going to do two times that value. Okay, so we're gonna do two times 0 0.0274, so we end up with our p-value being equal to 0 0.0548. So if we combine the area in the two tails, we end up with a probability value of 0 0.0548. Now what we're going to do is we are going to compare the two values. So I'm going to take 0 0.0548 and compare it to 0 0.05, which was the alpha level. I almost looked at the wrong spot on my paper. Um, the alpha is 0 0.05, and we can see that this time it is greater than. And so any time that it is greater than, we make the conclusion that to fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means that it's not as extreme as we would want to see in order for us to be able to reject. It's really close, so this is one of those where it's really important to determine your alpha level before you start, because had we picked the alpha level that we had in the previous problem of 0 0.10, then we would have rejected the null hypothesis. So you always want to determine the alpha level before starting the test so that you don't do an unethical practice um, by making it make the results that you want it to have. All right, so what I want to do now is I want you to pause the video and try these two problems. So I gave you two different ones. I gave you a two-tail test and a right-tail test. And I want you to go through and see if you can come up with the answer. After you have come up with the answer, go ahead and resume playing, and I will go over those for you. All right, so I'm going to assume that you did try these on your own. So let's go ahead and look at the results. So for the first one, we have that Z is 1.75. And since it is two tail, 
we would shade the area to the right of 1.75 and the area to the left of negative 1.75. And remember that half of my p-value is here and half of my p-value is here. So for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two times the p-value that, or the probability that z is greater than 1.75 because that's what we were given. Okay, so now let's grab our chart. Like I said, I'm just gonna go to the negative 1.75 because it already gives me the one minus the area. So when I do that, I get 0.0401. And then remember, we need to multiply this by two. And I should have written the two first, but I started writing the 0 0.0401. But we always have to do two times that area. So our p-value ends up being 0 0.0802. And if you ran this in your calculator, you would actually get 0 0.0801. So sometimes the table of answers are slightly different. All right, so now let's compare the two values. So if we compare p-value to alpha, we would see that 0 0.0802 is greater than 0 0.05. And so remember that anytime it's greater than, we fail to reject h sub 0. Okay, or the null hypothesis. That means that um, if the null hypothesis were true, we would expect to see results like these approximately 8% of the time. All right, so the last one that we had um, was Z is 1.99, and it's a right tail test. So that tells me that we are going to shade the right tail. And for this one, because it's just right tail, we would be looking for the area to the right. So we would just say that the probability that Z is greater than 1.99. And like I said, even though it's positive, instead of doing one minus the area to the left, I just do the shortcut and go to negative 1.99 and see that it's 0 0.0233. Sorry, my numbers, I'm writing them backwards. So 0 0.0233 would give us our p-value. Now, if we want to compare p-value to alpha, we can see that 0 0.0233 is less than 0 0.10. So the conclusion that we would make on this one is to reject the null hypothesis. So hopefully you were able to get both of these U-try problems um, correct on your own. And if you were able to get them, then that means that you know what you're doing. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like to see, please let me know that as well.